Hi everyone. Let's work through an activity-based costing demonstration. Um, we'll use problem 5-36, which you see on your screen, as the basis. We're talking about the Meditech Inc. company, and they make two medical devices, Medford and Prokel. And uh, first we'll, we'll approach it from a traditional approach by applying overhead on the basis of direct labor hours. Now, they tell us that the anticipated overhead and direct labor time um, is $710,000 and 20,000 hours. We also have some other information about our two products. We have a number of units, 2,500 and 3,125. We know that direct material cost for Medform is 30 bucks an hour, Procal it's 45, and it takes three hours at, I'm going to assume that is the average labor cost for the plant of 15 bucks to make Medford, and it takes four hours to make the Procal product. Okay, now, they also know that they're anticipating that the 710,000 uh, of overhead, and they've broken it down into uh, their three, three activities. There's order processing, there's machine hours worked, and there's inspection hours. And in this table in here, we have the information uh, that we'll need to derive an activity-based costing approach. Now, management is concerned because they're seeing declining profitability despite an increase in sales. And what has them puzzled is that they've recently um, have put in some highly automated machinery and they expected to see some significant operating efficiencies. Okay, now let's look at the first requirement and solve that. Assuming uh, the traditional approach, direct labor hours as applied to overhead, let's compute the manufacturing cost for the two products. Assuming the expected volume uh, is achieved, so it's 2500 and 3125, and let's go to another worksheet and solve that. Now, you'll see that I've done some work ahead of time just so that the demonstration doesn't take uh, all that long. Okay, we need to know the, ma the material cost first, 30 and 45, so let's fill that in. $30 and Procal is 45. Next, we need to know the direct labor cost, and they tell us it takes three hours at 15 bucks. So we'll say equal three times 15 is 45. And uh, for Procal, it's an extra hour. Four times 15 is 60 bucks. Now, then we have to compute an overhead rate, and I've already solved it. It's 35.50, and let me show you how I did that. They gave us the budgeted overhead rate of 710,000. They gave us the budgeted direct labor hours of 20,000. If we simply divide the 710 by the 20,000, we come up with 35.50. Well, if we know that, then we know we can take equal to three hours times that 35.50. And in this cell, we can take the four hours times that uh, 3550. And as a result, for part one, the numbers we were looking for uh, were 150 is the cost of the Medford product and 247 for the Procal. Okay, now, what do we need to solve in product two? The same approach, let's determine it using activity based costing. Okay, well, I've laid out the, uh, the activities in front of us, which is order processing machine and product expansion, uh, product inspection, if you will. We need to determine the costs, 120, 500, and 90,000, respectively. Let's drop those in. And 90,000 is for product inspection. The activity cost driver is the number of orders. 650,000 and 15,000. Does that make sense? 600 orders. Machine process, they have, what, 50,000 machine hours they anticipate and 15,000 inspection hours. Okay, so now we derive the, the rate, which is the cost divided by the activity driver. $200 is the uh, rate per order processed. $10 is the machine processing cost per machine hour. And for, for inspection hour, it's 6 bucks an hour. So that's part of part two. Okay, now I've uh, moved my uh, 
my Excel spreadsheet down so that we have a little bit more room to work. The next part that we want to calculate is um, uh, the overhead portion um, using these new rates. Okay, now we know there was 350 and 250 orders pro processed for Medford and Procal. So the Medford cost is going to be equal to that 350 times the $200. Let's take that times the 200. Okay, if I copy down, I get the cost for Procal, and then I can move it over, and everything should just line up just fine, right? 250, um, 250 orders processed times $200. Okay, now I can copy this down, and then we just have to change the reference cell that's coming from that cell there. So I will change that and change that. Okay, oh, excuse me, did that wrong. Now I did it right. Okay, so what we have now is 23,000 machine hours times 10 bucks per, per machine hour that we calculated above to determine how much cost should be um, applied to the Medford product. Now let's take the 27,000 times the 10 to determine how much needs to go to Procal. And again, we're going to make the same uh, uh, the same calculation here, but we need to now reference uh, the $6, which is in cell G25. And now we've determined, based on uh, the rate per activity, how much to allocate to Medford and Procal. And allocation is probably the wrong word. Uh, assign is probably a better choice of words. All right, now let's sum those. So now of that 710,000, we've reallocated it uh, a little bit different. Now let me put the total over here so you can, uh, you can see that we haven't actually created any more costs. We've just reallocated them. So there's the 710 of overhead that uh, we're working with. Okay, that takes care of, uh, of part two. Right, and part two asked us to uh, assume the unit manufacturing cost of Procal. I think we need to then use the same approach from above. Let's copy that. Actually, let's copy uh, just that piece. Slide on down where you can see it a little bit. Okay, so the direct material doesn't change, and the direct labor doesn't change, but our overhead does, right? I missed one step here. Let's take let's take a look at the production volumes again. There was what 2,500 units expected in 3125. Okay, so if we do that on a per unit basis, we'll take the cost divided by the units. And there's the two answers we need of the overhead. And this is actually just the overhead. So we'll say overhead cost per unit. ABC approach. Oh, okay. So now, instead of the three hours at the 35 predetermined overhead rate and the four hours at the overhead rate, we will use the overhead rates that we calculated above under an activity-based costing approach. So now when we sum the material labor and the overhead, we get a different cost of product. We get 204.60 and we get 228.52. Okay, now, let's look at that difference. And I think I need to make these a little bit larger for you. And I'll slide again so that uh, we don't come off, uh, slide off the screen. Now, if I take the original cost, which is way up here, right? That one 
181 minus the new cost, I can compute the difference. Okay, so what does that tell us? It tells us that um, Medford cost was originally 247, and now we believe a better cost is 228. So that was originally undercosted. Okay. Um, I, I meant the, the, the Procal was 247. Now it's 228. Uh, so that was overcosted. I've said that backwards. And Medform was 181, and it is now 204. So it was originally undercosted using the traditional approach. And there's the dollar value. Now, what are we supposed to answer in Part B? Is it possible that overcosting and undercosting, in other words, cost distortions, and the determination of selling price, if they're based on cost, are contributing to uh, some of the company's problems? Well, the answer there is yes, especially since MedTech's selling prices are, ba are based heavily on cost. An overcosted product um, may result in inflated selling price, and if you remember from your economics courses, uh, if the price is too high, then a likely output is that um, buyers will look for a competing product, and therefore the volumes will be lower than what we expect. Now, in the case of undercosted products, if our price is too low, uh, we may be selling more, more of it based on competitive pressures, uh, but we we might not be covering all our costs, or certainly making less of a, a of a profit than what we anticipated. So those are some of the issues that uh, get highlighted and hopefully can get resolved when a company uh, switches to an activity-based costing solution. Okay, we've solved the problem, everyone. There's the lower half of it. And part one appears there. Thanks, everyone.